In this video, I'll take you through nine exercises I think are super effective that I don't see nearly enough people doing. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here, PhD in sports science with Wolf Coaching. The sign is back and so am I. The aim of this video is to break down some forgotten about exercises that you really should be doing if you want to maximize muscle growth. Before we get into them, let me give you a quick caveat. Very few studies directly compare exercises. So while I'm making a very educated guess here as to what exercises are likely to be best for hypertrophy, Note that we don't have a ton of direct evidence on these exercises. Instead, I'm relying upon broad scientific principles that we seem to have arrived at. For example, emphasizing the stretch in a given exercise will generally make it better compared to an exercise that doesn't emphasize the stretch. Other exercises on this list are more time efficient than traditional exercises I see people performing in the gym for muscle growth. And finally, some of these exercises I've almost never seen anyone do in the gym. So without further ado, here's exercise number one. We'll start with the upper body. The dumbbell fly is one of the most underdone chest exercises for hypertrophy. For a long time, people have been maligning the dumbbell fly for hypertrophy, saying that it causes shoulder injuries or that it's suboptimal because you're not getting a full range of motion or a good resistance curve. And instead, people have been advocating for the cable chest crossover or the machine fly, or even the pec deck machine instead. While these are all effective exercises, I personally think the dumbbell fly is going to be a better chest exercise, even though I don't see that many people doing it. The dumbbell fly allows for a deeper stretch compared to a pec deck or to a machine fly typically, and the resistance is maxed out in that stretch position, which for hypertrophy is likely a good thing. Additionally, the dumbbell fly allows you to depress your scapula without restricting range of motion which further increases the stretch on the pecs. A couple of important tips for the dumbbell fly are to keep your elbows relatively straight, don't just turn it into a weird press fly hybrid, and generally perform dumbbell flies for sets of anywhere between 10 reps and 30 reps. That's personally where I think they're most useful. In the heavier rep range of say five to 10 reps, you're likely better served with a compound movement. I've got a whole video on the best chest exercises you can check out, but that is the long and short of it. Next, we have the dumbbell pullover. While I see many people perform the cable pullover for the lats, the dumbbell pullover has also kind of fallen out of favor in the gym crowd. Similarly to the dumbbell fly, I think this is a shame. The dumbbell pullover is essentially a length and partial for your lats. On average, it's going to train your lats at longer muscle lengths in a more stretched position compared to the cable pullover. In general, you'll want to minimize the amount of elbow flexion. However, if you find that your triceps get really involved in a dumbbell pullover, you could play around with a bit more elbow bend as a means to reduce the moment arm on the elbow and on the triceps and increase the contribution of the lats to the movement. Compared to the cable pullover, I also think the dumbbell pullover is a little bit hard to cheat for most people. Keep your butt on the bench, don't extend your spine too much, and congratulations, it'll be very difficult to cheat the dumbbell pullover. Additionally, I think the exercise is well suited for higher rep ranges. I typically do sets of 15 to 30 reps on dumbbell pullovers. As such, it fills a really cool gap in your back training. Because doing pull downs or rows for sets of more than about 15 reps can get really systemically tiring, Dumbbell pullovers can work as a great exercise within that rep range. So don't get me wrong. Still do your pull downs, do your rows, etc. But the pullover, in my opinion, is going to be a phenomenal underrated lat exercise. Next, we have the single arm dumbbell preacher curl. Why the single arm dumbbell preacher curl specifically? Well, for tall fellows like myself, I am 6'2", I find that using a barbell or an easy bar typically restricts the stretch that I get at the bottom. The barbell will often hit the safeties or I'll hit the bench before I can get a full stretch. With the dumbbell on the other hand, there is nothing getting in the way of the dumbbell and your arm getting into a fully stretched position. So the dumbbell single arm preacher curl tends to just be more versatile for people of different builds. Now you might be saying, hold on, the preacher curl puts your biceps in a slightly more shortened position by having your shoulder flexed, right? And that's not a good thing, right? We want the muscle to be stretched out or lengthened. First of all, you're a Wolf coaching viewer, well done. But secondly, that might not be all there is to exercise selection. And in fact, one comparison we have of the preacher curl and the incline curl showed more favorable bicep hypertrophy from the preacher curl. And that likely has to do with the fact that the movement is most challenging when your forearm is parallel to the ground. In the preacher curl, that is close to the fully stretched position. Compare this to the incline curl, where the hardest part of the lift might be relatively close to the peak contraction. And so, while the preacher curl doesn't maximize stretch on the biceps, it does place a lot of tension in a relatively lengthened position on the biceps. I also find single arm dumbbell preacher curls to be very easy to push close to failure. And once again, these are pretty suitable to higher rep ranges. I can comfortably do these for sets of 15 to 30 reps, 
and still get close to failure. So while you might be doing your behind the back cable curls or Bayesian curls or other exercises as part of your bicep routine, do try including some single arm dumbbell preacher curls. Next up, we have the side delts. And one of the most underrated exercises in my opinion is the single arm flat lying dumbbell lateral raise. That is a long main. Essentially, lie sideways on a flat bench, grab a dumbbell, and do some lateral raises. Once again, the resistance will be greatest when your arm is parallel to the ground. And because you're lying down sideways, that will occur when your arm is right by your side. Contrast this to a standing dumbbell lateral raise. At that point in the movement, when your arm is just hanging by your side, there is essentially no tension on the side delt. So this movement is essentially a pretty flexible way of really loading that stretch position for the side delts. It doesn't require any cables or any machines, and yet it allows you to really effectively target that loaded stretch. Even if you're in a home gym and you don't have any cables and all you have is a bench and some dumbbells, you can still do this. I typically come to just below the bench and then come back up aiming for each lowering phase to last about two seconds. This is a hard movement. If you can use much more than about 30 pounds on this, I would be impressed. Submit your videos and have me give you a thumbs up. Make ego lifting cool again. Next, we have the dip, but specifically a dip where you go as deep as you can potentially go. Obviously pay attention to how much pain you experience. If going too deep for you, consistently causes pain, maybe don't do it and maybe see a physical therapist about it. This is not medical advice, but if you are able to get deep on the dip, it does provide a substantial loaded stretch on the triceps, specifically the medial and lateral head. It does provide a good stretch on the front delts and it likely provides a decent stretch on the lower chest and upper chest as well. I think that for a lot of trained lifters, the ass to grass or I guess shoulder to wrist dip is a really good option because it allows you to train in a more moderate rep range where you won't have too much trouble getting close to failure, but it's still pretty effective, provides a loaded stretch and so forth. At the very least, it doesn't take any special equipment. You can get very deep and get a loaded stretch on several muscles at once. And I find it a bit more time efficient than many exercises that require external load. So if you're pressed for time and still looking to get a good stimulus for hypertrophy in, try the dip going as deep as you can comfortably go. Exercise number six and rounding out our upper body exercises is the rear delt cable crossover. We've covered most of the muscle groups in the upper body at this point, but one of them we haven't really covered is the rear delt. And the way most people train their rear delts, they're probably missing out on something. The face pull is fine. The machine rear delt fly is fine. The way most people perform their rear delt fly is kind of okay as well. But if you want to get more muscle growth, there's a good chance that crossing over your arms and getting a deeper stretch in your rear delts is going to lead to more muscle growth. And personally, I think it's likely the single best rear delt exercise out there. You can apply the same concept of crossing over your arms and getting a deeper stretch in your rear delts to face pulls as well. If, for example, you do single arm face pulls, you can turn away from the cable and kind of get a deeper stretch in your rear delt by doing so. Now you might be asking, Dr. Milo, I see you getting one arm a little bit lower than the other. Wouldn't that cause asymmetries in your muscular development over time? Well, personally, I don't think it really will. The difference in motion of the arm is very minor between the two arms. And I suspect differences in hypertrophy would be quite minimal. However, if you are worried about this, just switch around your arms between sets. One set, your right arm goes over, next set, it goes under and repeat. And congratulations, you don't have to worry about this anymore. But I see you people, you have lagging rear delts, physique-wise. And so maybe try this out, it might help you. Now that we've covered all the upper body exercises, that's right, I see you, you wanna turn off this video, you better stay. I see your legs too. We're gonna cover three exercises I think are underrated for leg development. First, the quads. And I think for the quads, people love the leg extension. And don't get me wrong, it will grow some muscle but there's a very solid chance that the reverse Nordic curl or even the sissy squat are better exercises for quad hypertrophy. Your knee is capable of around 150 degrees of range of motion for a lot of people, and most leg extension machines have you going through maybe 90 or 110 degrees of knee extension range of motion. So you're missing out on between around 40 to 60 degrees of stretch on your quads. Additionally, the way most leg extension machines are built, they require you to have a hip angle of about 90 degrees or something. And because one part of your quads, the rectus femoris, is also a hip flexor, this further shortens that muscle. And finally, the leg extension is essentially a shortened partial. It is hardest at the very top of the movement when your quads are contracted, and easiest at the very bottom of the movement. Now, are there machines out there that can largely circumvent these issues? Yes, not entirely, but there are some machines out there like the Prime Fitness leg extension. But these are 
few and far in between. So instead, let's try using an exercise that kind of remedies all of these issues, and that is the reverse Nordic curl. By extending your hips, you're further lengthening the rectus femoris. Additionally, with this exercise, you can go as deep as you need to. You can max out your knee flexion range of motion and get a full stretch in your quads. And the third issue of leg extension, the fact that it's hard as the top, which is the opposite we want, is actually the opposite of what happens in the reverse Nordic curl. In the reverse Nordic curl, it gets harder and harder as you stretch out the quadriceps. But the main cues for this exercise are to keep your hips extended the whole time, even when you really don't want to, when you're starting to lift back up. And secondly, go as deep as you can comfortably go. The eighth underrated exercise for building muscle is the Smith Machine Split Squat. If you're struggling with getting sufficiently deep during a traditional squat, this might fix that issue to an extent. As a coach, I found that most people can get deeper in terms of their knee range of motion and their hip range of motion, and therefore get a deeper stretch on their quads, their adductors, and their glutes, if they do a single leg movement, like a split squat, as opposed to a squat. Additionally, using a Smith machine, you're able to substantially reduce the stability demands of a traditional split squat or lunge. And finally, on a Smith machine, you can re-rack the weight at any time, so you can go close to failure or to failure, even using partials quite safely. And the final benefit of the Smith machine split squat is that you're using quite a light weight. And so if you experience some pain with your back, for example, if you're loading it heavily, or if you're someone whose back tends to get quite tired from RDLs, good mornings, and squats, and therefore you find that your program kind of needs certain exercises that aren't as fatiguing in terms of your lower back, this could be a good choice. It's going to provide a great stimulus for your quads, minus your rectus femoris, for your glutes, and for your adductors. Again, minus the smaller adductor muscles and the smaller glute muscles. And finally, to round out these nine exercises, we have the pistol squat. Now hear me out. If there's anyone watching this video with a calisthenics background, you might be saying, Doctor, we knew this already. Pistol squats are great. And you're right, they are great. But for hypertrophy, I think they're great for different reasons than you might expect. Personally, recently, I've been doing a lot of pistol squats. Why? Because I'm busy. I'd be out here grinding, making videos for you. And so, I've stumbled upon the pistol squat. And the pistol squat is really time efficient. Personally, the only warm-up I really need is a set of bodyweight squats bilaterally, but then a couple of reps of sissy squats, maybe like a rep or two of pistol squats, and boom, I'm ready to go. It takes me about a minute or two to warm up total. Conversely, if I were to try to go heavy on the barbell squat, just loading the plates up to three, four, maybe even over four plates would take me quite a lot. If you're strong enough to do pistol squats for at least five reps, they become a really solid option for hypertrophy but I never see anyone do them in the gym. That's right, I didn't just clickbait you telling you unpopular exercises, I'm actually providing citations here. Or a question rather. When is the last time you saw someone do pistol squats in the gym? I sure haven't seen them. I personally like doing these as length and partials even to make it even more challenging. And honestly, I'm a fairly strong squatter. Like I can probably squat around 400 to 450 for 10 at my strongest. High bar, ass to grass, additional flex. Anyways, I can get maybe 8 to 10 length and partials on pistol squats with a good tempo. Obviously, your mileage may vary based on your body weight and all that, but I think pistol squats are underrated, especially if you're in a rush. And once again, like the Smith Machine Split Squat, they reduce the loading on the spine a little bit, which removes some limiting factors and reduces fatigue imposed upon the lower back musculature throughout the movement. For stability, I'd recommend holding on to something. Try to avoid using your arm to push yourself back up, but just having it there in case of you tipping over or what have you, can make it so that you can push this movement close to failure or to failure without really having to worry about tipping over as much. Those are nine exercises I think you should be doing in your routine that I don't see enough people doing. That is the video. If you like the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Do you agree that these nine exercises are really effective and not enough people are doing them? I want to hear your thoughts. Leave a comment down below. Now I hear you saying, but Dak, I just want someone to give me a program that is going to be individualized to me, highly effective, and I finally want to make gains. Well, look no further. Check out myoadapt.com and sign up to be notified when our training app that we've been working on for years finally gets released. We've looked at a lot of the competition and I'm super confident in saying this. It is like nothing else out there. I've been training with it myself for a few months now. It caters to your schedule, how many days a week you can train, what priorities you have. For example, if you want to specialize on certain muscle groups, it does all of that and delivers you with a truly individualized program that caters to your preferences, what sort of routine you want to follow, a ton of things. It is science-based. We use the latest science to inform exactly how it works, how many sets you do, how long you rest for between sets, 
what exercises it recommends you as a quick glimpse. If you're constrained by time, it'll prioritize giving you exercises that are time efficient. Whereas if you're not time constrained, it'll prioritize providing you with exercises that maximize effectiveness. And there's so much more to MyAdapt. So please, go check out myadapt.com, sign up to be notified, and you'll be able to lock in at a lower price than any other time. Now you might be saying, that's a nice t-shirt. Yeah, I agree. Let me show you the back. We looking fly as hell right here. If you like what you're seeing, check out rascalapparel.com. Their clothing is my favorite stuff to train in. It's comfortable, it's stylish. So if you like what you see, go check them out and use code WOLF at checkout for 10% off. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed these line exercises. Have a fantastic day and we'll see you next time. Peace.